our Cheryl Glassford has the breaking details from the scene. Well, it does appear that the officer is going to be okay, but we're told he did suffer minor head injuries in the crash and has been taken to UK Hospital. Now, this all happened just after 10 o'clock tonight. Well, Sam, we've just learned the verdict within the past few minutes after about four hours of deliberation. It was an emotional ceremony here at the police memorial in downtown Lexington. As you can see, cleanup is still going on here at this hour. They've already boarded up the windows where that car came crashing through this morning and replaced the glass door and over here, you'll see several glass cases that were destroyed this morning. We're here with the bar campaign where supporters are waiting for those first returns to come in. Well, it's hard to believe, but you're looking at what is the middle of Highway 206. You can see this mobile home has been completely destroyed. Fans came not only to catch a first glimpse of T.O. with the team, but maybe even bring home a souvenir. Police believe the thief got into the museum by forcing their way through this door. They got away with with around $15,000 worth of antique jewelry. Now, the mobile crime lab is out here. Detectives are still collecting evidence, and as you can see, they're inside the restaurant right now photographing the scene. As for the victims' names, they have not yet been released to us, and police are not naming any suspects at this time. However, they tell us they do have several leads that they are following up on. Live in Lexington, Cheryl Glassford, WKYT 27 News First. We're in a valley between two ridges with a little creek. Just as the sun was going down on day four of the search for 25-year-old Ryan Larkey. He found a black car just driving. And he is uh, possibly alive. Paramedics on ATVs rushed to where he'd been found not far from his campsite. I don't think for a second they thought that they would ever see him again. Injured but alive, surviving through heavy rain and temperatures in the 30s, wearing just jeans and a t-shirt and one shoe, he was brought to safety. And I kept yelling and we kept walking in that direction and then we finally heard, yeah, help, and then he said, ran right to him, found him then. With a search dog named Lisa guiding the way, two rescuers had heard Larky's cries for help. He was near a cliff's edge. He told them he'd been surviving on creek water. He said he heard us, he thought he was hallucinating. And I said, I'm sure you probably have been hallucinating for the past few days and the conditions you've been in, but he, he couldn't believe that we were actually there. But, I mean, he's a complete exhaust. Then a phone call to family members bringing news they'd hoped for. I tell you, I talked to him. He is coherent. Seems to be in really good shape for what he's been through. Ryan is right now leaving the scene. He is going to be flown to UK Hospital. Although questions remain about Larky's disappearance, the only thing on the minds of rescuers tonight, knowing a man has been brought back to those who love him. We found him and he's alive. That's, that's the best feeling in the world. Cheryl Glassford has the disturbing details and we warn you, they are graphic. Well, the crimes she's accused of are shocking, perhaps most to the people living here in the small town of Stanton, who tell us Bossage has been living here quietly for years. People see that this is a, uh, a rural area. They pretty well can live here and not be noticed. A peaceful neighborhood in Powell County. That's where authorities apprehended 51-year-old Azra Bashic. I'm shocked. It's a world away from war-torn Bosnia, where in 1992, Bashic is accused of murdering and torturing Serbian civilians while serving the Croatian army. Bosnian prosecutors allege in one instance she cut a man's throat, then forced other prisoners to drink the blood from his wound. And she seemed to care about people. Eli Vyer says it can't be the neighbor he knows. I think she was a nice person and hard worker. Byers lives right next door to Bosch on Boone Creek Road. Her Bosch was taken into custody by U.S. Marshals on Tuesday. When you heard some of these accusations, what was your reaction? I didn't believe it, and I still don't believe it. According to Byers, Bosch has lived in the house for several months, which is owned by a friend, and that she's been working at a local factory. Other neighbors are still trying to comprehend that someone on their street has been accused of war crimes. Society goes today, we don't know our neighbors like we used to. And right now, Bosch is awaiting a hearing on April 1st, which will determine whether she'll be allowed to be released on bail and perhaps return home here to Stanton. From Powell County, Cheryl Glassford, WKYT 27 News First. This is Delectar. Graceful, powerful, 
the type of athlete you'd expect to see compete at the World Equestrian Games. Good boy. Ho. Oh. Talk to him. At the reins. Nice correction in there, Aaron. Aaron Alberta. 2,400 miles from her home in Seattle. Really, I want to represent my country well. Together, they are art, judged meticulously on the slightest misstep. Do the homework now. Keep those hands low, good girl. It's a culmination of a lot of hopes and dreams and a lot of hard work. But great teams like this are rarely built in the show ring. They're built in the moments when one teammate needs another to lean on. Here, Delectar is just Dylan, helping his best friend steady her weakened legs. I got sick in college, and that's when my disability onset. Seven years ago, Alberta was diagnosed with a rare nervous system disorder, one that caused her to lose control of her muscles and lose hope for her promising equestrian career. I quit riding because I just felt like I couldn't, I couldn't do it with my new body, and I don't know why it was such a block to me. Good. That was fine. That was a good schooling. That changed when she met Coach Jenny Nell. Looks good, Nicole. She helped point me in a direction of helping me find an identity. Keep it walking forward, though. I'm also an athlete and a young woman and a role model. You need to relax your body. I know it's called spasticity and you can't, but I need you to try. You know, being able to ride has given her that sense of freedom of movement. It gives her that opportunity to feel beautiful again and to feel um, normal. Because when Alberta is riding Dylan, she is the picture of grace. We bought this horse specifically to train and bring to the World Equestrian Games, and we made that goal. You're awesome. Look at you, rock star. Good girl. Six legs, some stronger than others, and three hearts beating as one. Good boy. That's what it will take for them to win on the world stage, but they've come so far already. Make my coach Jenny proud and make my horse Dylan proud and hopefully have a little fun while I'm doing it. It's my baby. The importance of family. And will always be. That's right. Even more meaningful today for the hoods. It's just something you never dream of, you know, it could happen to you. You see it all the time, but I never, never ever dreamed something like that could happen. I mean, it feels like you just made this house and it's perfect. So then the next day it's all gone. It's got no dream. Firefighters were called to their house on Echo Hollow Road in Clay City just before 7 Sunday morning. We have lost it all right here. This has this been everything. It was already burned to the ground when help arrived. Ten-year-old Layla and her mother and father were not home when the fire started. We just got word that the house had burnt. They'd stayed the night at a local motel, a birthday present for Layla, so she and some friends could swim in the pool. Then they got the call. I realized it was not a joke. We're trying to figure out why and how. How they'd suddenly lost a home they built themselves six years ago. It's perfect to me. And held everything they owned, from clothing and furniture to Layla's fish tank. The big orange fish. And things with sentimental value. There was a picture in there I loved. Gone. What was it a picture of? Uh, where I used to see my Nana before she went out of my life. As investigators work to determine a cause, the family says what's important is that they're all okay. She be good. She, she can handle with me. Been rough, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> My sweetheart. In Clay City. Sure is. Cheryl Glassford, WKYT 27 News First.